Super exciting day for me today because I've got my second 5.32 kilowatt hour battery installed to go alongside my SunSync inverter and other battery. But I made a bit of a mistake, Sean, didn't I? Because I probably should have had that battery installed the first time around. What was my uh, incorrect thinking? Uh, we can't have done anything backwards. <laughs> we did, didn't we? Because yeah. I didn't have you in to do that pre-assessment, which we saw in the previous video. And I didn't understand how much actually I was going to use within my installation. So I use a roughly 10 kilowatts, which works out perfect for me for these two batteries. Would this have been something that maybe you would have advised me before I had the installed them? Uh, yes, so if we'd done the, the bit beforehand and you've seen the previous video, I sized it a lot better. Okay, well I've recorded you installing it, roughly how long would it take you to fit that second battery? About 10 minutes. 10 minutes, it is only a 10 minute job. So yeah. again, it might be that a customer decides maybe to have no batteries or to start off with one because that's where their budget sits and then they can add to that system as we go along. So we could have gone maybe up to four batteries and added one more to get me to where I think I need to be at 10 kilowatt hours. Just talk me through that process of what you did to install that second battery. Uh, mounted the bracket, obviously picked a sensible location, which is next to it. Obviously checked our, our lead lengths as well, because yeah. the batteries come with a, a certain amount of length and there are different packs you can get. The shortest ones, don't we? The shortest ones. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but it, but it fits, fits in the tree, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah okay. So that it we, fits perfectly. So yeah. Um, yeah, so we've lined them up next to each other and we've had to remove one of the negative cables from the existing master battery, move that to the slave. And it's not as easy as just popping those off, is it? There is a tiny little switch, isn't there, yeah. that we can turn that battery off. We wouldn't want to be pulling those off on mm -hmm. low would we not sure? like, no. no, not at all. <laughs> okay, so so what we've done there is we've taken the negative lead out of my initial battery. Yeah, so we, okay. so we class the first battery as the master, okay. and then additional batteries are slaves. Okay, so so we've taken that one out, and that's got two negatives in my second battery now, yeah. isn't it? And then we've brought the positive lead back across, have we? Yeah. So okay. We put them in parallel. Ah, so we've got them in parallel. That makes sense. And by having these two batteries, obviously, we now need to make sure we keep a continuity of a bond between them, don't we? we need to make sure there is a little earth lead in there as well, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, little fly lead. And also the data as well. Yeah, the data communication lead, which was a little bit short, so I do a homemade <laughs> lead there. So what's that data lead doing? Is it just telling the, the other batteries there effectively? Yeah, so it's communicating with the inverter to the first battery and then uh, master battery to slave, oh. and then they all talk to each other. Okay. So the inverter can see that you've got two batteries. Okay, so two batteries are in, and it was a 10 minute job, which was fantastic. But the benefits for me as a customer, obviously I can store twice as much electricity. Mm -hmm. It does mean that we go down to, I think, 20% discharge. Okay, that's the recommended that you only discharge 80% of your battery, yeah. yeah, and leave 20% in both. So I've got roughly, for easy maths, I've got about eight kilowatts now that I can play with of energy that I can use. But it's also the ability to discharge, isn't it? I've got a bigger discharge now. What was my previous discharge? 2.5. 2.5 kilowatts from the one battery, but my inverter is rated at 3.6. 3.6. By adding the second battery, what do I get up to now? 3.6. So I'm up at the full 3.6. So a couple of benefits for me there. Store more energy, but I can actually discharge more, yeah. which was, you know, obviously when you've got an oven on, maybe a microwave, an air fryer, and maybe someone's upstairs with a hairdryer on, you've got a greater chance with the solar energy plus a 3.6 discharge that you get a lot closer to what actually you're going to need. I just couldn't believe that incredible. And it just worked, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <Straight> <laughs> it <in>. No, <laughs> Nothing to do on the panel was. We just no. looked and it was there, went to 3.6 and done. And then straight away you saw, yeah, obviously the house is using sort of 500 watts. Yeah. Uh, and then it's, yeah, automatically discharging that battery. What a simple system in order to add to the SunSync inverter and battery already had. So I'm covered now. So we think when we get to those months, maybe we're looking at probably April to September. Yeah. That I should be once off we get, Yeah, once we get past the shortest days and go and start going to the longer days. So yeah. we start creating more light. Yeah, and not many people are in the day, so of course they should be both full. And I've worked out that you know, previously in September when I had, at the time we all came in from work, I had a full battery, really nice position. But that full battery, let's say I've got four kilowatts of energy roughly to use in there that it wasn't enough. It no. couldn't get me through to the morning when the sunshine came back out again by having that second battery. I should be off grid yep. in those months. And boy, will I be telling everyone, Sean, when I'm <laughs> off grid. Show everyone your app. Yeah, I will show everyone my app. <laughs> if you want to know how much energy I've used across each of the months, my wife has kept all the bills. If you want to check out that video, it'll be just here.